Getco Mining special coverage of the Bank of Montreal's 32nd Global Metals Mining and Critical Minerals Conference is brought to you by First Majestic Silver. Lithium Americas has been owning the EV headlines with a $650 million investment by GM. I'm with Jonathan Evans. He is CEO. Welcome to Kitco. Thank you. Thanks. The other headline uh, that you had was you had the good news uh, regarding the judgment uh, regarding Thacker Pass. Uh, but I just wanted to get some pieces that was that was uh, left over to do, and that would have to do with the tailings as well as uh, waste management as well. Is that that's manageable? It is. It's actually something that the court actually pushed back to the Bureau of Land Management, the Department of the Interior. Uh, and that's a process that's an administrative process. It's very well wrote and very well defined uh, and something that we're working on in conjunction with them. It's not subject to uh, court oversight or to a public review at all. And based on the judge actually mentioned it in her ruling that there's a lot of data that would lead her to indicate that mineralization exists. And she's right. So. The reason why the judge actually mentioned it was that the Rosemont ruling was something that happened while we were in the appeal process. If it had happened uh, during permitting, we would have gone back and actually have demonstrated that while we were permitting or pre-permitting. So it's, I think, added a little bit of a precedent for new projects in the U.S., but based on the work we've done, in fact, part of our uh, resources was drilled out as part of the waste pad, and it's a set of entry deposit. It's, uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it's all over. Uh, there. So I don't think we're not worried about that. It's very limited to 1,300 acres where the waste rock and tailings is, so it's not an area we're going to touch for three years anyways, but the process will be done well before that. You mentioned Rosemont. That's a HUD Bay, is that correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah that's in, it was in Arizona. Yeah. So uh, talking about that, in another interview, you were talking about lithium projects and, uh, you know, we do need lithium because of energy transition. You're saying in the U.S. it's about a decade uh, with building these. Now... There is some work that's being done legislatively that might actually uh, improve the uh, permitting. But it seems like uh, with any of these large mining projects, it usually becomes a legal thing. So again, mentioning Rosemont, uh, there's Twin Metals, uh, there's uh, Ioneer, they were having their own issues as well too. Right. Um, it seems like the U.S. is kind of stuck right now because this is usually, the, you know, see, these things are gonna usually end up in court. Uh, yeah, the permitting process for us, counting the appeal took four years. So it was about 20 months for the formal permitting process. You have to file a, uh, a draft plan of operations. It has to be accepted by the government. Then you get into a formal process, about 20 months. And then we had an appeal, which took about two years. Uh, there is a momentum for permit reform in the U.S. because it's bigger than just lithium or critical minerals. It's things like uh, the grid, uh, solar farms, wind farms, and so forth. So it has bipartisan support to include the president. Uh, there'll be another bill that's being promulgated right now on the House of Representatives to go to the Senate. And I think a version of it has a good chance of passing over the next two years, you know, the remaining part of this administration's you know, first term, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, the Inflation uh, Reduction Act. Um, talk about uh, how big a benefit that has been to uh, the uh, industry. I think it's been a real shot on the arm, not only in the U.S., but I think uh, globally. Actually, as well, you're, you, you've seen uh, reactions from the Europeans. It's, it's a recharge Europe. Uh, the uh, Canadian and the U.S. government are working very closely together. I think critical minerals policy is sort of very intertwined, uh, where the Department of Defense actually considers Canada domestic. Uh, so we'll, we'll invest cross-border. And uh, based on discussions we've had with the Canadian government, whether it's uh, ex-in bank type of loans, grants, and so forth, it, the, I think North America is becoming a destination of choice because of this industrial policy, which sort of levels the playing field from a cost standpoint. So you're right, there's some other pieces that needs to come into this. Permit reform is one. And I would say U.S. can be hard. Canada is not exactly easy either. So both governments, I think, are really uh, focused on making an environment where things can be done safely, uh, where no rules are changed or, or uh, watered down. But at the same time, you know, where there's some predictability on when you get answers, either yes or no, or, or some sort of direction upon uh, what companies need to do to improve or, or uh, fix situations. Uh, it seems like the big amounts have been going downstream. I'm just wondering about support for uh, grassroots or a lithium exploration space. Are we seeing enough support there? Uh, well, I, the U.S. government-wise, the DOD or the Department of Defense in the U.S. actually does uh, grants for that yeah. for, to include things like uh, feasibility studies, uh, drilling and exploration. Uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure yet. The Canadian government, I haven't read through their policies yet, but I think there's open support for everything from exploration all the way through processing. And I think both governments get the idea now that it's just not a processing problem. I mean, I, I, I'm old enough to remember, and 
fortunately in my age here, the Arab oil embargo, uh, where um, you know we're all standing in line for gas in the U.S. There's plenty of refineries, but there weren't enough. There was enough oil. So in lithium, like any other critical mineral, you need the base metal and you need the conversion capacity both if you're going to solve the problem. In another interview, you were talking about uh, building a Thacker Pass and you're talking about the importance of uh, co-location. You're talking about uh, both having the resource and having the manufacturing. Why is that important? Uh, you look at uh, life cycle analysis, carbon footprints. Uh, if you look at the path today of where uh, lithium travels from uh, either South America or Australia to China, uh, China in some cases to Korea or Japan or to the U.S., it's a very long path. Uh, and they're exposed supply chains, especially given in the kind of geopolitical environment we're in now. The war in Ukraine is a, is a good example of uh, how supply chains can get impacted quickly uh, with these exogenous situations. So I think manufacturers want to have control or more oversight, especially in trusted jurisdictions, and for them to be shorter because, frankly, that's part of helping out the, the greenhouse gas emissions as well is keeping things co-located and smaller where you're just moving it around less. Nevada, where uh, Thacker Pass is based, it's an interesting state because uh, not only have you got all of the uh, lithium projects that are coming online, uh, such as yourself or Ioneer or other companies that are advancing, uh, but there's a real downstream uh, base as well, too, just around what's yeah. happening with uh, the car plants. Um, I don't think it's GM, but there's another car company that is uh, certainly building some manufacturing facilities down there. How important has that downstream um, sector been uh, for the company in terms of acting Thacker, as opposed to say Thacker was in a, you know, was in a state where you didn't have that. Well, Nevada, I'll say, as a jurisdiction is great. It's one of the top mining jurisdictions in the world. Some folks, well, this conference, a lot of people would probably know that. It's the third largest gold producing uh, region in the world. Uh, so there's already an environment, a business friendly environment, especially a resource development uh, friendly environment. Uh, uh, Nevada has some of the most uh, up-to-date uh, mining laws as well. They have their own mining laws, which were updated in the early 90s. And then to your point, you have Tesla, you have Redwood, uh, you have uh, Albemarle. Uh, and beyond that, there's a bunch of startups around different battery technologies where the state is really looking to go beyond gaming as a source of income. COVID was a tough time. Obviously, people couldn't travel and so forth. So a way to diversify as a tax base, take advantage of a lot of infrastructure and, and frankly, a lot of smart people that are in and around the Reno, Carson area, and, and now even around Las Vegas. Uh, and you're in a great location. You're next to one of the largest EV markets in the world in California. Uh, so Redwood's gonna have a lot of material to recycle. Obviously Tesla has strong roots uh, in Silicon Valley and in uh, uh, the, the Nevada area as well. So I think it's a, it's a great ecosystem actually. And the States uh, wants to take advantage of that uh, to help diversify the economy. We hear again and again that this lithium crunch any technology, anything out there that you think is uh, you're looking at that might be potentially game changing, or are we just going to be doing these incremental grind hoes? Uh, I, I think there are areas within the process flow sheets. I mean, we have some, um, let's say, patented. Well, they are patented. There's three uh, aspects of our process where, and one that's not even employed right now, which actually significantly reduces the amount of water that we use, probably for phase two. There's a lot of talk about uh, direct lithium extraction, which not a new idea. Livent does this today in uh, Argentina, but there are improvements that can be made on that as well to help uh, unlock resources that maybe in the past were, were not, um, they weren't developable uh, with traditional solar evaporation uh, or other methods. So I think there's gonna be a lot more options to look at resource development with, with new technology that's coming. And it's gonna hopefully keep it at a cost that's lower uh, than you know where some of these projects started off at at least. Jonathan, thanks for your time. Thank you. My name is Michael McRae with Kitco Mining here at the BMO Conference. Kitco Mining special coverage of the Bank of Montreal's 32nd Global Metals Mining and Critical Minerals Conference is brought to you by First Majestic Silver.